Hello and welcome back to Bee Monster Laboratory. Today we're going to check out the 4M tin can robot. We're going to turn a metal can into a walking, wobbling, googly eyed robot. It's going to be a lot of fun. Let's check it out. The Tin Can Robot is another 4M STEAM product, S-T-E-A-M. It's a STEAM educational product for ages 8 and up. It does have some mixed reviews online. Some people really like it, other people not so much. The uh, biggest complaint that I see is about the instructions. There is some building involved, which is what I'm looking for. I purchased it on Amazon for just under $10, pretty cheap. So. With that said, let's uh, check it out and see what we think of it. There's not a lot to this robot. The instructions are three pages long. And it calls for using a can, but I don't drink uh, anything out of a can. So I'm going to use this lemonade bottle here. Uh, hopefully it'll work out. We'll see how it does. You also want to use a small Phillips head screwdriver, preferably with a uh, magnetized tip. It'll make it easier to pick up your, um, your screws and your bolts. This is the body plate. It's the main part of the robot. It's what you'll be attaching most everything to. And we'll go ahead and remove this and take the motor out so that we can uh, get the screw in behind the motor. And then we'll put the motor back just the way you pulled it out. These plastic circles are the body rings, which will go around the can and hold it in place. And what we'll do now is take a half of the body ring and just plug it right in there where it goes. You'll see those two little holes there that it fits right into. And then we'll flip it over and then put a screw in the back to hold it in place. This is where a magnetized tip comes in handy. It makes it a lot easier just to pick up a screw, pop it in there and start twisting. The screws are a tight fit, so you just want to be sure not to over tighten because you could crack the piece and then ruin your robot. Now we're going to add the second half ring and that will be added at the bottom just the way you did the top. I'm going to put it in on this side and then flip it over and then add a screw to the back side to hold it in place. Now it's time to add the battery pack, the battery holder, and when you do that you want to make sure the switch is closest to where the motor will be uh, reinstalled. And you just put the wires through these holes here. They line up perfectly and the other side of the battery pack at the top here, you're going to have a little groove and you want to make sure that the battery pack is in that groove. You flip it over and this is what it looks like. Notice here that the switch is near the motor. And we'll go ahead and apply two screws on the inside of the battery pack here. This will attach the battery pack to the body. So here's where your screws are going to be. They're going to be right here in this corner and then the other screw is going to be in the opposite corner right here. And I flip it over here and this is the proper orientation that uh, you should have your battery pack attached to the body. Now we're just going to add some cooking oil to the axle, the axle gear here. And we're also going to add it to the spindle gear which is attached to the motor. I place the motor back in. There's only one way the motor will fit and that's with the spindle in between the plastic pieces here. And then you thread those wires through the hole just like they were when you removed them. So go ahead and grease up the spindle and the axle and then fit them together. This grease is supposed to cut down on the friction and the wear and tear of your motor. Now we're going to take the motor and axle cover and place it over the motor and axle just to hold it in place. And we're going to secure it to the body 
using four screws. The screws are the small, the small screws. The bolts are the bigger ones. So we're gonna use four screws, attach two on each side. So this is what your cover should look like after you have put the four screws in. Now the instructions call for putting the, the tires or the wheels on. Mine already came with wheels on, but it says to put one wheel with the hump down and the other wheel with the hump up so that it'll wobble when it walks, as you can see how it is here. That's only if you need to put those on there. Like I said, mine was already on. Now it's time to attach the wires and you'll see these little holes with the metal rim on them and you're going to use these these clear plastic pegs right here to hold them in place what we're going to do is put a black wire and a red wire together in these holes and make sure that they're touching that metal rim that's how they make their connection And we're going to secure it in place with this plastic peg here. And it should look like that. Now we have the red wire from the battery pack attached to the black wire from the motor. And we're going to do the same thing on the other side. Now you can see that I have both of them secured in place with the clear plastic terminal caps, I guess is what you call them and it should look like that. Now it's time to put on the other part of our ring here that's gonna secure the can. We are gonna use a bolt, which is the longer one here. We're gonna use that on either side of the ring and we're going to fasten it together to the other part of the ring using a nut. Now you only have four bolts and four nuts and you use those to attach the rings. Now once you're done with the bottom ring, it should look like this. Now when you do the top ring, you're going to include this straw attachment on either side, and that's to hold the straw, which are his arms. Now the easiest thing to do is put the bolt through the straw attachment, through both of the ring halves there, like that, and apply your nut underneath to attach it. And then you'll do the same thing to the other side. Now remember your straw attachment is what holds the straw, holds his arms, so you'll want it a little tight, but remember not to over tighten because I have a feeling that this could break easily if you over tighten too much. And this is what it should look like once you completed the upper ring as well with the straw attachment on the front, not in between. I made a mistake of putting it in between and I look closer at the instructions and it attaches to the front. It doesn't fit in between. Now it's time to attach the long leg. Now there's a long leg and a short leg. You want the long leg and you want to connect it to that little groove right here right above the battery pack and you want to screw that in that long leg is going to be the contact for the floor when you roll your can along it's going to scrape along the floor and you do it just like that and now it's time to apply our short leg and the short leg will go on the outside of the bottom ring and that will be the floor contact when the can and the robot is in the vertical position. That, will, that short leg will contact the floor as it scoots along in that position. So just put a screw through it to fasten it. You want it uh, not too tight, but uh, tight enough not to wiggle around.
Now it's time to put our arms on or our straws, attach a straw to the ring. This is our arms and at some point you're going to have to trim this down because it's crazy long and unnecessary. So I'll, I'll trim it later, but for now I'm going to put that on and I'm going to put on a gripper hand at the end. The gripper hands are the horseshoe looking plastic pieces to, um, I guess, to mimic his hands, to make it look like his hands. And you're going to do, do the same thing for the other side. Now we've come to my favorite part, uh, the crazy eyes. That's what I call them. They're googly eyes or whatever. And we're going to peel them off, peel the back off, and affix them to the eye plate. Now you're going to attach the wire to the back of the eye plate. And each end of the wire has a circle. And that circle fits right into the groove on the back of the eye plate. You can't do it wrong. Anyway, you fit that in the groove, you put the screw in there, and then tighten that up. Now that the wire is attached to the eye, uh, we just have a straight wire, and a straight wire is boring. So you can uh, make it spiral by wrapping it around your screwdriver or a uh, straight rod or some piece like that. You could also just bend it in crazy shapes, however you want to do it. I just did uh, a couple of uh, spirals. You can do a lot more. You can do bigger spirals, smaller spirals. Really, whatever you want to do, just to add a little character to your, your, uh, your can robot here. Next, we're going to attach the other end of our wire that's connected to the eye. We're going to connect it to the back of the battery pack. You can see there's a little circle right here, a little groove that it fits right into. You just put it in there and you put a screw in there. Remember not to over tighten. And you do the same thing for the other side and then you have your eyes attached. Some things to remember while you're building your robot is to, uh, I left my straws original length and I'll cut them down to size how I want them later. You're going to want to make sure that your worm gear on your motor and your wheel gear on the axle are interlocked. If they're not, you're not going to get any kind of movement from your robot. Now it's probably not the end of the world if you don't use cooking oil on the gears, but it's probably a good idea because it'll, it'll help it last longer and there won't be as much friction. Also, you want to get the wires connected correctly. If you're unsure, you can always pause the video to make sure that you have the orientation correct. Well, I've added my lemonade bottle, which is quite a bit taller than a 12 ounce soda can. And uh, it feels top heavy, but we'll see. And this is what the final product looks like when the can or uh, bottle is uh, actually in the holders here. We're going, just going to go ahead and put a battery in and see what it does, see how it acts. All right, this thing really does not do well with the tall bottle. It was meant for, I think, a 12 ounce can. And uh, if it didn't have wobbly wheels, I think it would do fine. I just can't get it to go very far. If it were slower, maybe, but it's not gonna work. I found somebody generous enough to give me their trash. So now I have an empty 12 ounce Dr. Pepper can, which means I need to trim the arms down a little bit because like I said, they're crazy long. So I trimmed off three inches on each side and now it looks perfect.
If I want my robot to move horizontally, I need to put both black wires in one terminal and both red wires in one terminal. And I'll also adjust the arms and then flip the eyes up so that it's looking straight ahead. Really not that much of a change, but uh, just some minor adjustments for a different configuration of your robot. I wouldn't say that this robot is exactly durable, so you do have to be careful with it. I don't think it would survive a drop. It doesn't roll or move on carpet or area rugs, only flat surfaces as far as I can tell. Now, although this is for ages 8 and up, I think an 8 year old or even a 10 year old would have a little difficulty putting this together without adult supervision. Although this robot was just under $10 and it is fairly cheap, it was fun to build. It was easy to build. I had no problems. I do like the way it moves. I like the fact that it has an option for two different configurations, either vertical or horizontal. I think it would be a great project for like a rainy day or after school project or just something to do for fun around the house. And overall, I was pretty happy with this purchase. That's all I have for today. And as always, thank you very much for watching. If you've ever used any of the other 4M STEAM educational items, uh, robots or toys, let me know what you think of them. Uh, let me know what you think of this robot. And until next time, keep playing, keep learning, and we'll see you again.